But you have to wonder, now with all these devices, the biggest thing happening out there in the cool people world is there's now something called a selfies battle. Selfies is who can take the best picture. So here is one of my favorite selfies battle. Let's see how it goes. It's on. Be better with uh, with a Google Glass. <laughs> she was just saying, "What's the name of the hamburger joint?" Honest Abe, tell them what they're doing. But they sell a really basic t-shirt style and they're getting people who wear the t-shirts in all different parts of the, country, the world, take little selfies and then send it pictures and post on their Facebook page. Battle on! Boy, technology is showing up everywhere. Hey, I've got some great other things to show you here. What's also coming up and very quickly as we go along. Hey, if you remember, we were talking about ways to get students more engaged in the classroom and online. And we were talking about Dr. Chickering's. Uh, and the last one, if you remember, it was trying to, you know, engage contact between students and teachers. And some of our ideas were visually, you know, so that students could see things and discuss them more easily. And we also did something called Z-Maps. Do you all like Z-Maps where we could see where we was from? But principle number two, we have to finish these at the end of the day. It says develop reciprocity and cooperation among students. Wow. So someone put that into English. What does that mean? Work together. And you think that's so simple? Most of our students, if you even say teamwork in class, they'll go, really? Because they've all had a team member from Hades. <laughs> yes? <laughs> Just. Oh, count off to three. They're like, oh, no, where you go one, two, three, and that's your group, or you're a one, or you're a two, you're a three. Oh, so how do we do this and make it such a positive experience for students? Well, what we're going to do with this particular one is to make them uh, cooperate and work together a little bit, is let me show you an idea of what we're going to put together with a little reciprocity and working together. What I'm going to have them do to make them a little more active learning, working together, is I want to show you this website called thinglink.com. Everybody head to thinglink. Say the word with me because it's cool. Thinglink. thinglink. You don't even know what it is, but you want one. <laughs> it's not what you go to the doctor's office and have this thinglink over here for a couple weeks. Help me out. And it works on Android, iOS. If you happen to have an iPad with you today, an iOS phone, an Android phone. There's actually a free app called ThingLink as well, and I like the app better uh, on those devices. But if you're in a traditional computer, PC or Mac, just go to ThingLink.com. And again, let me share an idea with you how you could make reciprocity in your group. What I do in my class is I make sure every group of two students that at least one has technology with them. Okay, that way, if someone doesn't have technology, they don't feel left out. So imagine everybody in your class grouped in two, however you want to group them, ones, twos, or just making sure everybody has a piece of technology. I, again, let's go back through how I would do it. Chapter three, back to chapter three. I would have them each group find a term, a major term in chapter three, that they're going to teach to the class during the following class session. Again, it could be online, it could be in person. So every team has their topic. And you say, well, online, do you use teams? Absolutely. And I always do teamwork like this. Out of every time I assign a grade, out of 100%, there's two components, 50-50. The 150% is the grade that your team member gives you for your con contribution. Get it? <laughs> if they do nothing, what do you give them? A zero. And the other one is what I give the team response, how good is their project. 
So if two students, and you say, well, they always do this. Hey, we're working together. You can give me 100, right? Sure. And if I do nothing, what happens? <laughs> No, you don't. You know how people are. People are like, giving you a zero. So when I do teamwork, I make sure that they're really going to be a team, that there is some reciprocity, that they are going to work together. So let me show you how to use ThingLink. ThingLink does require you to, to join. And it's a very simple join. All it asks you to do right here is you can just type in your email address and you're in. So very, very simple. And I've already joined it onto this screen right over here. So what you do with ThingLink is you go and find an image on any topic you're teaching. An image. So give me something that you're teaching this week. Uh, we are learning about uh, customer service and uh, emerging trends. Okay, so they would get a picture of maybe someone wearing Google glasses for customer service at the airport. <laughs> so you would get this picture and the student can get any picture on any topic free of charge and they would load it into ThingLink and then they put these little hot spots. Do you see these little hot spots? I picked the topic called augmented reality. If I were talking about augmented reality in class, could you imagine I could either do it like this, augmented reality is the layering of supernatural layers that you can participate in. Isn't everyone sitting there going, I have no idea what augmented reality is. <laughs> but how about if I did this? Okay, what's augmented reality? If I hover over these little spots, do you see what's happening? It gives me videos that I can play and show what augmented reality is. Like this little girl touching the board and connecting. That's augmented reality. So I can put videos all over the place right here. I could hover over what they show right here uh, on this screen. Let me refresh because I'm already into another video. Uh, I could hover over these Google Glasses right here. And it would show me, oh, there's my red Google Glass. How do they work with augmented reality? So what this student is doing is finding media to teach their topic. Google Glass. But aside from making you look a little strange and taking pictures as you recklessly spin people's kids around, <laughs> what will Google Glass actually do for you? So, and how I tell the students, do you see how many hot spots are over this? There's tons of these. I tell them I expect 20 hot spots on your picture to teach your topic. But you're only going to have three or four minutes in front of the class, so pick which ones you want to show to teach your topic. So let's make one together so you can kind of see how this thing link works. I'm going to do a generalized topic that we'd all have to do. My topic is going to be dressing for the interview. Now, our students today don't understand that. <laughs> Even my own kids. I remember watching them go out of the house dressed for an interview and went, oh, no, we don't. Come back. <laughs> how long should your skirt be? How long should things be? <laughs> So, should we wear the tie, gentlemen? Is it okay to wear 30-year-old tennis shoes through the interview for an office position? Probably not. So, here I would go. Watch me. We're going to create a thing link. And don't forget, they're working in teams. So I'd hit this Create button right here. And it would allow me to find any picture on the web or any picture that I've taken. So you and your team member would have to decide what image is going to best teach our topic, and I'm going to put the hot spots all over. So I'm teaching how to give a shot. You know, would it be great to have a patient sitting there right there going, you know, and go through the steps of how to give that shot. So I could go out to the web and just simply find a picture to pull in here. You can go to any web address in the world and pull any picture in, or you can take a picture. I already have a picture that I want to use. So I, it's called dress of how I expect someone to dress during a job interview. So let me find my little picture that I already have ready to go here. But again, I could find it. So here is my picture of how I expect someone to dress during an interview. It's loading it right now. Do you all think that would be OK as long as we're not talking? Some jobs would dress differently, obviously. I mean, if you're repairing trucks, this probably wouldn't be the way to dress for the interview or a nurse even. Maybe they would wear something uh, 
scrubs. But in this case, this is just a general interview, you say, what kind of hot spots would you pick? Well, on the hot spot of the gentleman wearing a tie, what could I put? Yeah, the color of ties. Or how to tie a tie. They have YouTubes for that. Let me just show you how you would get a video. So they would then have to go out to places like YouTube, type in how to tie a tie. And we could put videos explaining this process so that I go out the door for my interview that I at least remember how to tie my tie if I'm a gentleman. This is teaching how to tie a Windsor knot. Uh, I still don't know how to tie a tie, so I would really need this. And this is not how to tie a tie. This is called an ad marketing here. So we'll let that pass in a second. Luckily, the ads don't come with it. So that'll be nice when we get this to stop. So after we conquer our world with cobalt at Lowe's, we could watch how to tie a tie. You get the idea. So I could take any link, copy it, and then come over and just click. Where should we put this physical link at? On the tie. So right here on the knot, I will click a spot. And you can either put words that could define every part of the picture just in words, or put videos or websites to make their hot spot. So now when I save my tag, I'll save it. When we now hover over this gentleman's tie here, look what happens. And no advertisement. It goes straight to the Windsor How to Tie a Tie right here. So how many hot spots can you make? As many as you require them to make to get the grade. And then they could come up and show their thing link or take the link of their thing link and put it in the discussion board of your LMS so they could see each other's. And I always make them comment on each other so they all learn all the topics in Chapter 3 online. And I tell them, a comment is not like, cool, good video. <laughs> they have to give me three sentences that prove by each sentence that I know you've watched that video. And little generic comments like, nice job, do not cut it. <laughs> I need to understand what was the video and the topic about. So give me some ideas. How might I use ThingLink in your classroom? And give me a topic. Yes. Wow. Students pick electrical, hydraulics, seed delivery, and teams. And then they spend about an hour researching it. And then they present that to the class. Yeah. Isn't that great? And they could hover over all these things and teach each other. You say, Corinne, the students aren't listening to me lecture. Flipping the classroom today is really the vogue in style thing. And I think mentally we're convinced that if I'm not standing right here and my voice is not coming out, that I must not be teaching. But how effective has that been? <laughs> not so much. Teaching is when you go from the sage on the stage to the guide on the side. If you can get those students interactively looking up that information on those three types of engines and delivery systems, and they're presenting it to their classmates, they're going to learn a lot more because they're actively participating, working as a community. They're having technology that they can share. One down. I need two more before we continue. What are you going to do with this technology, thing link? Well, we also have to teach students how to, like, we was, I was just talking to Al about creating a new Office 365 account. So maybe I would create it, and this would be how they see how to do something, a new way to show them how to do something. Yeah, you could go to the website and say, click here first, click there second, go here third. Because again, they're not sure how to do that. Could even be a screenshot of, let's say, Microsoft Word, and they could learn how to do MLA by putting hotspots on what they do at that spot. So that could work. One more. If you haven't contributed, we want you. Make you feel like you're a community. Yes? Well, we'd have the students look at a picture of surgical and sterile back table. And then there's just highlights on, tell me about this product. What, what does this item do? And, you know, what do you need to know about how to put this together? And yeah. And you could even give out different names. For example, this gentleman has an appendectomy. Could you tell me the tray that we would need to you know, create and go over all the elements there? 
So if someone brings out a chest spreader, this man is not going to be happy. He's like, no, 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 I just have an appendectomy. Stop it with the chest spreader. Could you do your own videos? Yeah. So I was just thinking, you know, like uh, to explain things, you know, what, what area is sterile, what area is not, and then they could click on it, you know, click on the areas that are, and they could say, correct, this is sterile because then you just would upload your own yeah. So we, earlier we saw Animoto. Do y'all remember that? We could put Animoto videos in here. We also could put Mix. Do you remember what Mix is now? We could put those pieces and parts in here. So again, students are going to take a lot more pride. They're going to learn the topic a lot more. They've watched tons of movies just to pick that one movie to use. You know, they learn so much more about their topics than if saying, make sure you tie your tie correctly for the interview. Who's clicked on it? You can actually see because it does show who's actually uh, the stats, how many people have looked at it. So if you told 100 students to look at this and you're getting 12, you know clearly that. <laughs> sure. And they can actually make comments here as well. So they can put the comments directly on this item here. And students love to be more active. Ask the student, would you rather write a 12-page paper about how to dress for an interview or make a thing link? And you say, yeah, but they still need to learn to write. I get that. But why aren't they writing sometimes on the screen and doing things more engaged and more practical today's world environment? So things like now, making students more reciprocity, cooperation, working together, creating something that they really, really can use along the way here. Well, number three, Chickering has come up with here, is almost a lot like number two. Encourage active learning. Get the students engaged, involved, and with some of these free technologies. And years ago, we didn't have technologies like this that would have been really difficult to do without some technologies here. So what I want to show you with this is there's this new mobile movement. Check this statement out. I love this. History will show that mobile technology will be the catalyst of the greatest revolution in education because it's putting the learner in the driver's seat. Think about education for the last zillion since Socrates, you know what I mean, way back when. It's been the teacher providing information to the students. One should imagine this, let's say today, a group of your friends, you're sitting in the back seat, today's not your drive day, drives you out to a place in Nebraska you've never seen. Go to a restaurant, everything's cool. Something terrible happens during the meal and you need to head back and they loan you their car, they're going to find another way back. You weren't paying attention the entire time. You're chatting in the car, moving along, and now you have to drive back, no GPS, no phone. Do you see the pickle that you're in? It's like, I, I was sitting in the back seat. Does everybody else do it? Um, Mike Haley drove me here yesterday, and now if you ask me to drive back to Omaha, I know it's pretty easy, but I'd be like, hmm. How do we do that? I was just talking to Mike the whole time. I don't know how I got here. So that's what happens in education today. Our students literally have been sitting in the back seat their entire educational career. They're sitting back there riding along, and sometimes I'm almost astonished. How do students not know some basics? I asked the other day what was the favorite city students had been to, and one girl said, Illinois. <laughs> and I said, well, which city in Illinois? She said, Illinois is a city. And I said, um, where? <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking, how did you make it to college with thinking Illinois is a city? I would think you would have picked that up somewhere. I think when they're in the back seat for so long and they can kind of glide along, multiple choice test, not really understanding that we've gotten our students here and some of them really can barely read. One would, you have a high school diploma, how is this possible? We haven't asked the students to drive at all. And if you get them in this active learning container where you're asking them to do something, then you can see them driving along the way. So let me show you a way to do this, and I'm hoping everyone can participate in this. What I want you to do is go to a free website, boy I can afford this, and it's called simplemeet.me. And look at the big letters up here so you can see how to type it in. And you can do this easily on your phones as well, so if you didn't bring a computer. Let's try simplemeet.me. I'm going to put you in the driver's seat of the classroom. So this is the easiest website you've ever seen. If you have 30 seconds before class starts, 
you can do a simple meet.me. So go to the web page simplemeet.me and meet is not spelled like turkey and pork. <laughs> it's spelled like nice to meet you. Got it? Simplemeet.me. And I'm going to play the teacher role, you're going to play the student role, but here's how I often do it in a class. I would make each of these tables, if this were my classroom, into a group activity so they can be more active. And I would have one person be the leader for the day, so let's say you're the leader. She would be starting the Simple Meet Me and her other two classmates would participate and they would have an entire dialogue and I would have a recording of it. Let me show you. So here we are at simplemeet.me. Let me uh, get this so you can see the screen. Who's there with me? Good? I'm going to hit start, but you guys are not. Do you see I'm going to start the chat? I have no account, no pre-set up, nothing. I just go to this website, hit start, and I've now created this chat environment. The rest of you, I now want you to go to the right side of the screen where it says join chat and type in my number, it's 6097. Tell me those four numbers again. So let's see if we can get a few of you in here. It doesn't matter your device. And I want to find out who's who. So I'm going to go up to the top and change my name. Look how I'm doing this so you can do this. I'm going to become the geek goddess, but you can have your real name or a fun name. So everybody, I've just become the geek goddess. Let's see who's joining us here. So I've got Terry T. I've got Trauma Fixer, good to know. <laughs> so I've got the Cool Cats, I've got Al, I've got the Milford Maniacs, all right. I've got Nurse, Nurse, Nurse. So we've got Husker 22, go Huskers. <laughs> Everybody looks at her like, is that you? Now, how many people can join this? You are limited to 10,000. <laughs> you good? <laughs> Anybody have more than that in your class? You should be paid more than you are. <laughs> Feels like it, doesn't it? I've got binary brainiacs. Love it. Now, here's what we're going to do. Everybody in this box, I want you to type the favorite technology you've learned today thus far. So everyone can communicate. Everyone can share. No Twitter feed needed. So, 10,000, don't tell administration, good point. Al loves Animoto. Trauma Fixer loves ThingLink. Alina loves ZMaps. Office Mill, Milford Maniacs likes, Mix. Animoto, Cool Cats love. So now we can get everybody's opinion, but let me show you some other features. It does more than just a chat. I always have each group, when they're working in group work on a topic, researching it, looking things up, they must put my email address here. Why? By putting that email address there, the moment they hang up, it sends me a chat log of their entire discussion. So I can see what they discussed. Now please understand, these students do not need to be in the same table or the same state. So you can get five online students to create an online environment where they discuss a topic. Maybe they're required to go 30 minutes to review the exam together. And they would automatically send me that log to make sure people just didn't open it and walk away. <laughs> and they could review for the test and one could be in Iraq on a ship. The other one could be in Lincoln down the street. <laughs> one could be working at the restaurant on the hay market because it works on phones and every device. So what I often require is how many minutes or discuss, and they can also share documents. So everybody see this upload? I'm going to upload something that I want to share with everyone here today. So I'm going to click the upload button. Everyone can actually do it. So I'm going to hit the upload button, go to my local computer, and I'm going to share a picture with everybody here that you are welcome to keep. So I can scroll down here. Let me find which picture I want to share today. Oh, there we go. So I'm uploading a quick little picture. You should be getting a button that now says download on your device. Everybody tap download. What did I send you? What does it say? Read it to me if you get it. Prehistoric Googling. Show your neighbors so they can see what it is.
So let me give you ideas of how to use this in a class. I want you to imagine that I have enough students to have six tables in a class. It doesn't have to be a table. I would identify one person as the leader to start the chat. The other three would join. You say, how do they join? They just type the first person's four-digit number. It's different every time. They would, first thing, put my email address at the bottom because I'll get the log when they're done. I might have them do something like, could everyone upload in your group last night's assignment that you've already turned in to me? Now, everybody upload it and grade someone else's. Talk about how, you know, or discuss how was their writing style? What did they learn? What happened? You could all research a topic, all type in things there that you're looking up. What are some websites you find? You know, you could click them here. Everybody go look at this video. So everybody on their own device or collectively could be looking at this, and I would automatically get this. But everybody would participate. No one can just be stealth. What's happening in our classes is one student or two students is taking over the dialogue. And the quiet student isn't getting to participate. Everyone participates this way. So now everyone could share their work, show what they're doing. You could do it as an entire class or break it down to groups. However, that works better. Let me give me some ideas that you're thinking while you're looking at simplemeet.me. I have students, um, they rent out these instruments, surgical instrument kits, and then oh. they go take them to their home. And it's online students. And what they do is they're given an assignment to recreate maybe a mayo tray for certain instruments for a certain procedure. And I could have each person do that, and then they could each pick up the instrument and say what it is, what category it's in, what classification, what you do with it. And so then they could post those videos and then share them with each other. Share them with each other very easily here. You wouldn't even need your LMS. I mean, they could do this very easily. Good one. Do you see how this just, you say, well, how is this different than Twitter? Twitter, you need the account, the setup, all this mess. Did you see? Now I can type more than 140 characters, I can share images, I can share vi videos. Everybody, if they're reviewing for the test, I often do this in online classes where you have to meet with uh, two students other than yourself for 15 minutes to review before Friday's test. It's a grade. And you have to use Simple Meet Me. They all get on here and they all put their email addresses at the bottom. So as they're reviewing, they'll ask each other, hey, what's the definition of? And the other person answers, and they're seeing all this review stuff and asking each other questions. Hey, I didn't understand what she was talking about with this. Can you explain it to me? And then they can all read through these logs. You could even uh, be on the log if you want. So very simple, very easy. And by the way, simplemeet.me is the, now the number one connection business tool out there today for free. So businesses are using this all the time. They get to a truck that's broken down on the side of the road, and they want to share a picture with a couple mechanics. What do you think is going on here? They can post that in a group setting without saying, did you get that email connection? What's your email address? It's just so quick to connect. <clears throat> yeah, what I do is um, I have them saying, OK, who, if, you, if you do better with nights, put your name on this in the discussion board if you do better with days so they all find out who is available kind of when. So when you only have two or three students they can usually find a time. Usually it's like 11 o'clock at night but they only have to put their 15 minutes in. And again they're learning tools that are really used in business today, feeling like a community and really they're not in the uh, back seat anymore. They're truly in that driver's seat so they can move forward. Hey, let me show you some others in our time left. You know, finding the right technology to work in your class is kind of like finding a dog from the pound. They're all so cute, but which one should you adopt? Should we get this one? He's so cute. Or maybe this one. I need this dog. I ain't seen nothing yet. So putting the student in the driver's seat, but how do we do number principle number four? 
give prompt feedback. We all know that makes sense. Most schools do have the rule that within 24 hours, Monday through Friday, you have to respond to a student email. Does that sound familiar? Maybe not. A lot of schools have that. But here's what happens. I call it the email dance. Let me show you how it works. Did you see where to log in? OK. You go to this page and log in. Is it working for you? No. Well, what seems to be the problem? I don't know. Well, you've got to give me some information so I can help you. No, no. Let's start at the beginning. Yes, do you all know the email dance? Perfectly done, by the way. You frustrate your wife, don't you? OK. <laughs> so what seems to be the problem? How can we work it out? Well, I want you to jot down this website. What's the name of it? I jot. Now, of course, you could grab your Google Glass and talk them through it, right? <laughs> But not all of us have that today. So let me just show you what this iJot does. I love this one. I'm going to show you this one for time's sake. And how iJot works, it's totally free, as everything we've shown today. I always find schools that say, hey, we'd like to do all these technologies, but we can't afford them. And I'm like, they don't cost anything. You saw that new Microsoft Mix. My goodness, that changes everything in our classrooms today. So with iJot, I just simply go to this free website, log in, and I'm going to show you this one up on mine. So I've had this student, true story, some of you heard it a couple weeks ago. Um, she signed up for my online class. My college's name is Central Virginia Community College. With me? The letters are CVCC. So I did the email dance with this student. She said, I can't log in, can't log in, can't log in. And I was like, ah. I finally said, Get, show me a screenshot of you logging in. You know, I want to see where you are. Well, it turns out she had a right login and password. But she was logging into the wrong college. <laughs> she wasn't CVCC, but another college in another state called Catawba Valley Community College. Isn't that strange that our logon does not work there? How rude. So. Here is the reaction I gave to her so to stop the email dance. So I just simply click Compose New Message. And this works great with phones as well, anything that with a camera. And check this out. See me? Just hit the red button. Class, I want to announce how to get started in our web course this summer. What I'd like you to do is log on to our Blackboard system. The website is www.cvcc.edu. I'm going to write that in the text message over here as well. Let me know how you can get started, and I look forward to working with you. Expect more messages. So I stop it. And again, you could record something. You could show something. You could do anything. And now the students can easily play it back. Now, I also get the students to do it, too, as a grade. I make, if you want extra credit on the test you just failed, <laughs> let's say you just got this test and you got a 61, barely passed. If you send me an ijot.com explaining the correct answer to everything you missed in detail, I will give you five-point curve or a 10 point, whatever you think is fair. And they have to do a video. You say, well, they don't have all this equipment. They can find a phone somewhere. <laughs> and they can then explain it. Then I know it's them in their own words. And they're not just copying it, pasting it. They had to understand it to read it back to me. So iJot would be great to send out messages or get the students to send messages to you. No cost, two buttons. Red on, black off. You can, send it. you can send it to any email address on the planet. What kind of things can you attach? Any kind of file. So if I think my students are hearing impaired, I just put what I'm saying over here. I often do that anyway because I like a, to read something. But you can put any file attachments. So if you want them to correct the math homework or redo the diagram, they could attach that as well. So it works with any email address, but couldn't be easier just to do a video. If you're teaching a class that has 
speech component or something along the way, this might be ideal to have engaged in here. What do you think of iJot? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Yeah, really easy, not hard. And again, I know what we all fear. Oh, are the students going to understand how to use it? Do you know what? I have put iJot in every course I've ever taught in the last two years. Students who've never touched a computer before, like beginning, beginning, beginning. Not one student has ever said, I didn't understand to use it. They see a red button that says record. <laughs> it's us that needs to feel comfortable with it. The students will, I assure you. So they send it out, done deal. Do you see a new way to give prompt feedback? And when I again say prompt feedback, not only by you, but by your students as well. I want you to read this with me today because I think it's kind of a synopsis in our last 10 minutes together, what we've kind of learned today. Say, read it, don't limit a child to your own learning, for he or she was born in another time. Isn't that the truth? And the funny thing is we know all this, but so often on Monday it's just easier to walk in. Today's lecture class is... We're showing you easy, free things. Nice entertainment today. You got to try Google Glass. You got to see what's cutting edge. But unless you personally make a change on Monday, it's kind of a waste of your time. <laughs> you got to try something. A couple more principles. Emphasize time on task. You know, that means that the moment that class starts or your online environment starts, are you really utilizing it to get the best information across? And I think some of us mean, well, let's just lecture really, really fast. This way I can get a lot more talking in, and that way we cover everything that we talk about and they've heard it at least once. No, no, no. The best utilization of time is sometimes changing things up, getting the students to dig in, and you stop talking. We talked about bell ringer activities. You know, just get the class started. For example, if I'm teaching a new way of how technology is being used, take them into Target. You all know the store, Target ladies, right? A new app is coming out later this year that you'll be able to put your list on, and it takes your grocery list or your needs list, and based on your app, it automatically takes your list in the store and reorders it to the layout of whatever store you walk into. Is that not cool? <laughs> Gotta make a list. And if you have your favorite product is on sale, an item that you use quite often, she always uses this and today it's on sale. She gets a little message. They're not really in the air, it's on her device. And let me just jump to the end here. She doesn't have to take all the items out of the cart at the end. As soon as she puts it in the cart or takes it out of the cart, it either adds or deducts to her list. Her form of payment is saved. She just puts her PIN number in. She can walk right out the door. So it knows when you take it off the shelf, uh -huh. it'll connect with it. As soon as it's in your cart or not. Yeah. Even if someone shoplifts and shoves it in their purse, <laughs> Yeah, it's going to get charged. <laughs> so it kind of takes away that problem. We talked about bell ringer activities, time on task. The moment students come in, start playing something that's interactive, engaging, because watch any given class. Our class is starting in our college around 11 o'clock is pretty typical. I walk around a lot at 11.10 if I don't teach a class that time, and I'm shocked by how many classes are still, no, no, get your books out. <laughs> Okay, no, 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 sit, sit, <laughs> Let, let's get started. They don't have that definitive moment where all eyes are up here, showing some kind of movie, capturing their attention, get the dialogue started, talk about the movie for a second, and then go into your activity. If you can grab their attention uh, as you move forward. Principle number six, communicate high expectations. I have to tell you about a little study as we go to our last few minutes together that I just did with my own class. Uh, it was really part of a much larger study that we did in our state. The state asked us if we would want to participate in a study that measured high expectations. 
So the first semester, here's what we were told. In your classes, if you want to participate in the study, do not make any hard and firm dates of anything being due except all at midterm, all at final. You could have suggested weekly topics on your online class, but just kind of have it out there. Whenever they get time to do it, then turn it in. It was a grading nightmare to start with. But mm, I'll tell you about their grades in a moment. Second semester, we were told by this study that our state did, make everything hard and fast. Unless there's a trauma. In other words, you know, their grandmother dies for that third time again. <laughs> um, you know, something really, you know, girls giving birth in class, you know, that's a trauma. We kind of give her a li little late on that, obviously. <laughs> but pretty much have everything due Mondays at midnight or pick a day that your labs are open. <laughs> so no late work, done deal. No extra points or deduction of points, just hard and fast. Got it? I can tell you my own results, and they mirrored the state's results. One of the semesters was 18 percentage points out of 100 higher as a collective average than the other. 18! Which semester? First, no due dates. Second, firm due dates. Firm due dates. 18 points. You are not doing students any help by constantly going, oh, I understand. I know we want to be the nice guy. I know we do. We want to have that relationship. But we aren't communicating high expectations and exactly what we're expecting of you. And if we don't, the students, you think you're doing them a favor. You are totally not. So have firm due dates. We're seeing out there today that there is a talent mismatch of what is hireable and what people are actually majoring in. And let me give you my own example. I remember sitting in my guidance counselor's office in ninth grade, true story, and my guidance counselor says, what do you like to do? And I said, I love art history, I really do. I can, I can talk about, you know, day golf for hours, I really could, I'm just fascinated by the whole thing. And I remember her saying, well, you should go and be a, a docent or something at an art museum and all this, and I, I remember coming home to mom and says, mom, the teacher said I should be an art history, you know, person. And my mother looked at me and she said, no. I said, no, no, I love doing that. She explained to me very simply, that is called a hobby. <laughs> I'm not saying there's no art history jobs, but you all understand that there's probably not millions in the state. <laughs> so we need to get students today, the high expectations, are we providing them with stats? What is the pay for this field? What are the job availability? And don't lie to make your program bigger. <laughs> Let them know what are the expectations out there really. Do you know the top field in the whole country right now is app development, making phone apps. Most schools don't even have a, a class in that. We are not creating the classes quick enough for how the world is changing. So do we have a talent mismatch and do they know the expectations of those jobs today? Um, and in closing, our last one, oh, it's my favorite, and I have five minutes, I have time. Principle seven, respect diverse talents and ways of learning. Our students do learn differently. But I find that when I try to put, like, cool videos up or do some of this multimedia, some students will like, be like, ugh, you didn't assign it. I'm not going to watch that mess. What's the easiest path to finishing this class without doing any of this other mess, right? So how can you judge it? My last technology, definitely jot it down. It's a Google activity. The website is actually the latter part. Write down video notes. That's actually the web address. But look where the dot is. Everybody, where's the dot between what and what? So you put in Google notes, but put a dot between the T and the E. The ES has nothing to do with Spanish. I'm from Miami, so I see the ES. I thought it was Espanol. <laughs> but it's nothing to do with that. Let me show you this last activity at video notes. So all you do is open up any browser, any device, and you type in video notes. The very first time that you go to use it, let me get the right address in there, it will ask you for any Google account. So it does need a free Google account. I think everyone pretty much has one. So I've already logged in with my Google account. Oh, here we go. It's going to ask me this time. So I'm just putting my free Google account in here as my login, because it's going to save 
any of the video notes that you made on your Google Drive. So let me show you how it works. I assign that I want the students to watch a particular movie for this class. So let me just show you the movie that I expect them to watch right here. I want them to go here and watch something about Google Glass. So I have this video that I want to definitely make sure that they're going to watch. So this is the video, but you know how it is. How am I going to prove? What am I going to say? Could you tell me the third word that they say? So instead, I can take this web address and I can copy it right here. Let me get that copied. And I can now open it in video notes. So all I'm doing is pasting the video that I was going to have the students watch anyway into video notes. So in just a second, you'll see this little video right here. And I could play it right here. It's about Google Glass. But how is this different? You say, okay, big deal. You got a video playing on the left side of the screen. <laughs> on the right side, the student is required by me to take notes every 15 seconds on what's happening. And it's time stamped that if they put, they click that word later to review, it'll take them to that spot in the movie to replay that moment back. So let me watch this movie. Let me show you a little more about the Google Glasses we tried out earlier. So I'm going to put up here in Google Glass. You wake up and you put on your glasses. It shows you your text messages. And if you look outside, it shows you the weather. It does voice to text. He's in New York City, going to take the subway. Maybe. But Google Glass has Google Maps, some of you found out. <laughs> I fixed the spelling. Puts it right into your calendar. Where's the music section? Indoor maps. Remember the book that he picks out right now. It can know your GPS or share it. If you wink, cool. it takes a picture. You can listen to music. And my favorite? Hi, what's up? Hey. Hey. Remember the book title? click on anything like weather, it goes right to that spot in the video. Or if I click on GPS, all the student has to do is click save notes right here. It saves it to Google and they can email it to anybody or turn it in for your class. So start putting more engaging multimedia. The world has billions of video clips now, but we never put them in because we think no one will watch them. Now if you require that every 15 seconds or whatever you decide, they have to take notes, maybe we can get more engaging activities and do a lot more with. Well guys, it's been my honor the last three hours. I want to thank Jill 
Jill Sand for putting everything together and planning out our day. We are going to repeat this same session at Jill's request um, of what we did today um, and leave you with this thought. This is my family. I'm the mother of six. The bride is not mine, but she is now my daughter-in-law. Yes, the grandson is mine, and the, my daughter who's holding my grandson is expecting again. Uh, the reason I show you this is I know a lot of times learning all this new stuff is a little overwhelming. I hope when you walk out this door, you're like, oh, my head hurts. There's so many new things. When am I going to start trying this? When will I have time? Guys, I'm not clearly a 20-something-year-old teacher. And a lot of times, I think after we've taught a while, it's like, ah, oh, we'll let the young ones do the cool stuff. <laughs> but very soon, we're going to have a student take both these teachers. And remember, one's going to do the old-fashioned same thing we've always done. And one of them is going to try some of these new innovative ways. And the student is really going to get turned on to what you're teaching. We have too high at every community college level in the, in the country of students who drop out of our classes, who do not get degrees, who are settling for less than best in their lives. So whether you've been teaching 28 years like I have or this is your first year, these students require our best, and it is an honor to do what we do. You say, my paycheck doesn't say that. No, if you were here for the pay, you wouldn't stay long. <laughs> for any of us. We're here because we really do want to make a difference in the lives. This week and next week and the rest of the semester and on to summer, let's not go with just basic. You've got a new class that you're starting to plan after this quarter. Try some of these new things and maybe sprinkle in a couple right now. I appreciate your time, but I'm not letting you walk out of the door without one last thing. I'm going to point at every one of you and you must tell me what's the one thing you're going to definitely try. Go. I'm going to try it in two weeks, so we'll play with it today. Video notes. I have an ethics discussion video assignment. They can take the little notes as they're watching these videos. Can they print, save them? Yeah, their yeah that prints and it print saves and everything. Our discussion. They have it ready for them. And then ready to go. Discussion. No problem. Thing, Thing link. Office mix. Animoto. Meet, whatever. Simple meet dot me. <laughs> Animoto. <laughs> Padlet. Animoto. Padlet. Video, Video notes. Animoto. Z Maps. Visually. Animoto. Animoto. I jot and Office Mix. I jot and Office Mix. I jot. I jot. Animoto. Thank you so much. Have a good day. We're repeating this at 12:30 to 3:30. So if you have a colleague.